don't carry their strength. Unlike them, you are not worthy to die by my hands. You'll be left to rot in the streets. The Nash legacy ends with you. Welcome to the most macho vampire movie you'll ever see. We are talking Corbin Nash, where everyone talks with a gravelly, growly voice. This one directed by Ben Jager, who also co-wrote this. And um, it's actually got a pretty good cast when you can first hear. Uh, you've got Corey Feldman, of course, who has a bit of a vampire history himself, of course, with the Lost Boys. And he plays this kind of weird, um, transsexual, divine-looking vampire. Yeah, it's been a little bit bizarre. But you've also got some veteran actors in here in very small roles. Malcolm McDowell, Rutger Hauer, uh, Bruce Davidson. The plot is pretty much Blade, <laughs> let's just say it. Blade with a sprinkling of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. It basically focuses on this hard-ass, kind of like, take-no-nonsense, MMA style cop um, called Corbin Nash and uh, he is basically kind of gets embroiled in this kind of uh, this world of vampires this secret world of vampires and um, is, is basically gets captured he has a bit of a history that he doesn't know about um, gets captured and ends, ends up in this kind of underground fight club for vampires and he kind of learns more about this world and ultimately becomes a vampire himself to kind of defend the uh, the weak and, and destroy all vampires a la Blade. So let's talk a little bit more about Corbin Nash. Let's start off with the title first of all. I do not think this is a great name for a movie because it tells you nothing about it. It sounds like it, a wrestler. Corbin Nash sounds like it should he should be straight from the WWE and it really doesn't give you any kind of uh, idea about what this movie is, is about. So... I don't think the, fact the title was doing this movie any favours. Um, also, this seemed like a pilot for a TV show. Uh, it's a weird movie because it it almost... I feel like this, these, the makers of this film are a big fans of Marvel, and I'll say why in a minute. But it kind of... Um, you don't really get the kind of the meat of the story until right the last kind of 20 minutes or so. And it's pretty much all set up, and then we have the kind of the payoff where Corbin Nash goes against some kind of mid-level bosses, but the kind of the big guys, the, the evil guy, the, the top dogs, are really just hinted at. So it seems like it's a pilot for a TV show, if that makes sense. And why I say it kind of reminds me of Marvel, because it's clearly influenced by Blade, but also I would say Deadpool, uh, the way the storytelling uh, structure is, it kind of, uh, it, it almost has that, that thing where it's, it's you have a scene of the film and it kind of you go back and you're telling flashbacks and it kind of relates to that that part of the scene very much like the first uh, Deadpool film so it, it definitely has that influence to it um, this movie takes itself way too seriously way too seriously and the funny thing about it is is that makes it actually quite funny now in one way, I would say this film probably would have benefited from having a comedy relief character, other than kind of Corey, Corey Feldman's character, who is just bizarre. Um, because it's such, it's so, it takes itself so seriously and wants to be so kind of macho, you can't help but just be amused by how, how much this kind of, it, they're taking it so seriously. I mean, this, let me tell you this. This has got more F-bombs in it that it would make Tarantino blush. It really has. I mean, it's just, it's so funny. People are, are so kind of like, maybe it, with the exception of Corey Feldman, basically. Uh, but everyone, certainly our main character. He's just so like, oh, I'm so tough. It's so funny. It's so funny. And then, then the bizarre decision to have the vast majority of this film in this kind of fight club, which really doesn't have any relevance to the actual larger, larger plot. It just seems they've got this set, and they'll have a few kind of uh, matches in there, 
um, because fighting. And we don't know really what, know why the vampires are doing it, if I'm honest, for sport, but why? Um, you know, it's, it's bizarre. Um, are there some good things that work? I've got to say, it, it may sound like I'm being harsh in this movie, but I actually found it quite enjoyable. But maybe not for the reasons the filmmakers intended, but it, I still found it enjoyable. Because it's, it, it's kind of, it's so weirdly toned that you can't help but kind of be intrigued by it. Now that being said, there are some really good um, shots in here that really do look good. There's a really, uh, for me personally, I was really blown away and it's actually a shot inside this kind of fighting ring and it kind of, you see the kind of the mist kind of part ways and all these kind of vampires eyes kind of start sort of showing up and glowing and because of the head vampire there. And then it's a really great shot. I mean, it kind of looks a little animated, but I, I, I felt it was really effective. So I kind of quite like that. <clears throat> the actual violence as well, I would say, is very well shot. It does look very brutal. Um, our, our fight scenes, um, you know, do look that they're connecting. And there's a really good... The blood that they're using is, all pla is, is practical. And I've got to say, for movie blood, this actually looks pretty good. It kind of looks very kind of um, authentic. I mean, some, some, some blood you'll see, you know, it's too bright or... You know, it doesn't kind of look right. This, I've got to say, looks pretty good. I mean, it's not especially gory, but it's very bloody. Um, and the blood, kind of like stuff that they're using, the corn syrup, I'm assuming, looks really good. It really does look pretty effective. Um, but it's it's like, it's just such a bizarre film. Going to Corey Philbin, so he's kind of our mid-level boss, basically. And uh, it's here and this other guy. And uh, they're basically kind of like, Almost like the, the vampires are kind of like the mafia, I suppose, and they're like two enforcers. And for some reason, he's like this kind of, uh, uh, you know, um, drag queen, and he's kind of like the other kind of guy, he's like his cabana boy, I guess. Um, and, uh, you know, he's, he's hamming it up quite a lot. I mean, I didn't realise it was Corey Feldman, to be honest with you, uh, until a little way. I thought, that, he kind of looks familiar. And then I kind of dawned him, and I had to check the credits. I went, oh, yeah, it is him. But it, oh, that's clever casting, I will say that. Um, the guy who plays Corbin Nash, who I think is the, the director's brother, it, he just, he just, he just, he's, the tone of it is just so kind of gruff, and I'm such a hard, hard ass, and I'm going to stand on the rooftop and go, Rah! with no one else around. I mean, it's real cheesy. Um, it's, this is like, like a real B-movie aficionado's film, I would say that. Uh, and it's, it is so kind of, uh, it takes itself so sincerely, I can't help but like it. Um, it's such a, it's, it's kind of crap, but I kind of had a fun with it, I've got to say. And there are some, like I said, I think the, the smattering of some bigger actors does give it some credibility, although they, they're really small roles. Uh, the kind of um, narration at the beginning of my Malcolm McDowell's a little bit OTT, I've got to say. Uh, but it's a bit... The, oh, there's so much I could say about this film. The, the decision to really not have the plot until the last 20 minutes, that was a real bad decision, if you ask me. I mean, I don't know why you would make this film and have and then release it without any kind of like, oh yeah, we'll make all these other ones or we'll make a series about it. But it doesn't, it doesn't really work. You've got to get people hooked in this first film before you can kind of... Make this giant world, I suppose. Um, this film has got a whole host of problems. It really has. Um, but it has this kind of this earnest cheesiness that I that I did appreciate. Because I am a bit of a B-movie fan, as you probably know, if you watch this channel. Um, so if you are a B-movie horror fan, as long as you can kind of laugh at this film, I feel you'd enjoy it. But be aware that it, it doesn't realise how kind of like silly it's actually being, I don't think. I bet you the filmmakers will say, oh yeah, we totally knew that after the fact, but I don't think they did. And it's so kind of, I mean, it is, it's basically Blade 3 without the humour. There you go. Um, even the bad guy is called Drake, and that's all that he was called from it in Blade 3. The, uh, the big bad guy. It's worth a watch, because it's a real bizarre movie. But I kind of found it so quite fun, I've got to say. So I'll give, I mean, I can't give it too high a mark. It's fraught with problems. 
but I will say I'll give it an average score of 5 out of 10. But I think it's an enjoyable film, provided you know what you're getting in for. You will have a, a good time with it, but it's by no, although there's some artistic flourishes in there, um, I think Corbin Nash could have done with fleshing out his character and maybe not be the one note. They could have done with having a little bit of a variety of characters and not have every single one be this kind of gravelly voiced badass. 5 out of 10. I'd be really curious to see what uh, anyone else thinks about this film because it's such a weird one. Anyway, let me know if you have seen it. Uh, 5 out of 10 for me. Bye for now.